Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas. This is Silicon Angles and Wikibon's The Cube. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. Join my co-host here for the next three days, Dave Vellante. This is our, our kickoff segment, um, really kind of the preview. It's cocktail hour. Uh, everyone's schmoozing, doing a little networking. Had the you know, early sessions and talks, the analyst meeting, Dave, we were at. Um, and we'd love, we'd love to break down the analysis. You're going to hear commentary, opinion, uh, and facts all week. Um, we'll break it down. But I love when we have the analysts on. So Dave Vellante, we have here uh, Jillian Morandi, an analyst with uh, TBR Research. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. It's so we love the analysts. Let's just get right in. So I got to ask you, so the horse is on the track. You got Amazon, Rackspace, uh, IBM, VMware, uh, now Pivotal. That's kind of a new school. And you got Salesforce and a bunch of other guys out there, kind of, I'd call them kind of Gen 1. What's your take of the horses on the track and cloud? Who's got what advantages and who's in the lead? Sure, I think Amazon Web Services is definitely in the lead in terms of public infrastructure as a service. Um, I think a ton of companies have built a whole business on Amazon. They have a great partner ecosystem, certifications, um, and they really over the last 18, 24 months have um, they've released so many new services around um, the AWS platform. I think they've really taken the lead technologically as well as revenue-wise. Um, in our cloud benchmark, they've really pulled away from the rest of the vendors. They're growing faster, um, and they're really leaving, um, you know, leaving their mark. In terms of the, the second place infrastructure provider, I think that space is open. You know, over the past six months, my view on Rackspace has changed a lot. Um, I thought they were a middle of the road player for a while, but I, I do think OpenStack will be very important and I think they're making a lot of investments there. They're training um, their partners, they're training their customers. So I think they have a, a good chance at, at breaking out as well as you know, Pivotal is going to be super interesting. Well, so let's talk about um, your analysis on AWS. You say they're leading the marketplace. Think they, they can do four billion this year, revenue-wise? You think they can hit four billion? Um, we're estimating around three. three. I wouldn't be surprised if they hit four. I mean, it's hard to tell, right? Because it's in the other category. Yeah. But uh, okay. So, and and in terms of infrastructure service, what percent of the market you think they have? Is it 60, 70 percent? You think it's that high? Um, that's tough. I would say maybe around 40 percent, if I had to guess. Because there happen. are a lot of smaller vendors. There's Savvis, Dimension Data, um, Software. Sort of depends on what you include in there. Maybe pure. Uh, now, you, you cover software and cloud, yep. right? That's sort of a, a broad category. Yeah. So we were talking off camera, AWS, Rackspace. You cover ServiceNow, Salesforce, a couple hot companies, HP yep. Software. And, uh, um, and now, when you cover cloud, you cover HP's cloud as well? Um, yes, I do in conjunction with a few team members. So there's um, a few of us, there's a hardware analyst, me, um, another software and cloud analyst, professional services. Um, so we cover companies like HP and IBM, their cloud businesses from a pretty broad angle because they do so much. So what do you make of the whole CIA deal? You saw that, you saw the, you know, the news came out, the judge's opinion came out. What'd you, what'd you take away from all that? Um, I think if anything, it really helped Amazon's credibility. If one, they won the CIA deal um, at a more expensive price than Amazon, the CIA noted that, um, or sorry, than IBM, um, IBM wasn't as flexible as Amazon, um, it wasn't as secure, this is coming from the CIA, not me. Um, I think if anything, their winning it in the first place really made them a player in this space, in the enterprise and the federal world. And then when IBM got, you know, started firing back at them, and especially with their new campaign against them, it's just helping Amazon and not making IBM. It's making them look scared. Well, so, and it's basically IBM saying, hey, we're not going to just let you take our accounts. We're going to fight tooth and nail, right? So, Julian, yeah. I got to ask. So, Amazon's really doing well, obviously, infrastructure as a service. That's their kind of their bread and butter. We pegged their market share around 36%. And then about 25 other players are going for about 64% spread amongst them, depending upon who you talk to. Okay, that's great. That's the usual size of Verizon, Terramark, all the other guys. Um, what about the pass market? How do you see uh, the pass market from a competitive standpoint? You got everyone kind of coming in there, a lot of education is needed. What's the dynamics in platforms of service? Does that go away? Is that a real market segment? Or does it come, get subsumed with 
between SaaS and PaaS and the infrastructure? Uh, I think right now it's a very, very real segment. I think test and dev is a huge workload that companies are moving to the cloud and we consider that um, platform. I think eventually, um, since platform is from the top down and the bottom up, I think in the long run it'll probably get rolled into either SaaS or infrastructure vendors. Um, uh, what I think is most interesting right now about the past space is the API management and mobile backend as a service. So these platforms connecting, um, if I'm a mobile app developer and I want to connect to all the data, say in Salesforce, I can go through these vendors and connect the back end to the front end and not really have to worry about it. So I, I do think platform, I think that's going to be the sticky point. I think it's going to be you know, somewhat easy to move from infrastructure to infrastructure if you want. I think the platform and the development and the customization is going to be that, that sticky layer. So you kind of have like Cloud Plus, which is Amazon, IAS Plus, mm -hmm. and you kind of got SaaS Minus, which is Salesforce. <laughs> Does the market really need pass? I mean, you're essentially saying it's going to evolve into one of those two layers, right? It's going to bifurcate. You really don't, do you need that middle layer of pass? I think you need it now because I think a lot of um, the SaaS players and a lot of the infrastructure players, um, you know, their ecosystems are a little behind. So I think acquiring a pass vendor like an engine yard, Oracle's invested a ton of money in engine yard, um, so have a few other vendors. I think that the layer is essential. However, I think that, yeah, it'll eventually be rolled up. Now we talked to Elizabeth at Oracle Open World, your mm -hmm. colleague, uh, and, and Obviously she covers Oracle. Do you cover the Oracle Cloud? Do you have an opinion on the Oracle Cloud, what they're doing? Um, Elizabeth is definitely the one to talk so that's to her, about that's that. that's her category. <laughs> okay, but you, so you, you but let me ask you more generically then. You see these, uh, you see a lot of cloud washing going on, a lot of, yep. but, but, but people are getting serious about the cloud. I mean, Oracle's an example. Certainly HP's you know, cl cloud, they're getting serious. IBM's acquisition of, of software. Mm -hmm. How do you see this all shaking out? It's like Amazon you know, took, took a huge lead They've got the flywheel effect that Andy Jassy talks about. Is their lead sustainable? Do you feel like the, the traditional enterprise guys are going to you know, hold on to their base? What's your, what's your crystal ball say? Um, in my opinion, I think Amazon is very threatening to a lot of the vendors. I think that's why IBM did acquire SoftLayer. I don't necessarily think that these companies want to be public cloud vendors. I think they need to be cloud vendors because they need to protect that install base. Um, in terms of the long run, HP, Dell, IBM, Microsoft, um, I think they'll do well. They have the infrastructure in place, the software, um, a lot of components to let their customers offer cloud to the end users. Um, I think they'll do, do well, but more in the private and hybrid cloud market. So right now, we just completed a, a private and hybrid cloud study, and you know the the large traditional vendors came out ahead. Um, you know they offer cloud, they offer hybrid, they offer professional services. So there definitely is a play for them there, and I don't necessarily think they want to get into the the high volume, low margin business of an Amazon. They're operationally not set up to do that. If they do want to though, they have the distribution channels to quickly roll that out. So let's unpack that a little bit. You guys just did a big study on this. So, so you said they came out ahead ahead of what, startups, ahead of Amazon, ahead based on capabilities. Talk about that a little bit. So what we found was the in the public cloud market, the Salesforce, um, Amazon, ServiceNow, Workday, they come out ahead. In the private cloud and hybrid cloud studies, we really have found that the, the more traditional vendors have come out um, ahead of, in, in, well in private it wouldn't matter as much, but for hybrid they came out ahead. Um, and I think that's because vendors trust them more and they just offer it more. Amazon doesn't want to be a private cloud vendor. Right, so now is this based on sort of your, your customer feedback, your, your rating system, a combination? Why don't you talk about that a little bit? So it's based on um, interviewing about a thousand customers. We did survey work, interview work, and we constantly speak with partners in the market. Now you so have a this lot of a good. lot of angles. So you have this that's thousands a good number, right? I mean that's a substantial you know, observation space to use a John Furrier. <laughs> um, so but but you have this sort of bias in the market between the IT guys. You ask you ask an IT person. You know, one thing, you ask a, a head of marketing, you get another, a different answer. 
Help us squint through that schism. Sure. What are you seeing there? Sure, so I think, um, I think a lot of the outcome buyers are going to be line of business. So those are people who want to buy, um, they want to write a check, they want a service. Uh, for IT, I think that Amazon will probably do well in IT. I think ServiceNow, they sell into IT and then they spread. So I think right now, um, IT is still the, the biggest purchaser of cloud. I think that'll change over time as IT, it, IT is going to change so much because it, um, it gives people's outcomes. So sales teams 20 years ago didn't have something like a Salesforce. So, so I think now that the option is there, they'll buy it. So, so ServiceNow is a company you follow. I wonder if we could just talk about them for a minute. because yep. We love ServiceNow. We did the Knowledge Conference last year and uh, been, been tracking them a little bit. Well, they're just cleaning up. I mean, they seem to be such enthusiasm in the base around what they're doing. They are focused on enabling IT, not trying to end run you know, uh, IT. What's your take on, on ServiceNow? I think ServiceNow is a, a great company. They started out as a platform, built ITSM, made their customers understand um, you know, exactly how flexible they were, and now they're permeating the rest of the company. Um, I think the technology in, is awesome, it's in place, they really service the enterprise. And then I think bringing on Frank Slootman to run the company and run operations was an excellent choice. It's, you know, there's the technology side and the business side, and um, a lot of companies that are growing that fast, you know, sometimes they need to bring on an outside person who has gone through that to really go to the next level. So I want to bring it back to Amazon. Obviously we're here at reInvent, a lot of buzz going on. Were you here last year? No, no so my first we weren't, year. We, didn't have the, we weren't here either, but I understand it's probably at least double what it was. So talk about competition again. Amazon, I mean, I don't know if you saw that, you probably presumably saw the Gartner Magic Quadrant, Amazon in the upper right, CSC yep. was kind of in the same quarter, but nowhere close. 5X, you know, more s compute power or storage, or whatever that metric was. To the extent that, that you buy that, it was good research, I mean, let, let's, let's assume that for a second. Mm -hmm. Why is Amazon running ahead of the pack the way they are? I think they made the market. They always had to be ahead of the market because they supported Amazon. Um, and I, I think that what they've done, they can build web services so quickly, they're very agile. Um, you know, they're not worried about their market share or their um, EPS because it's Amazon. So I think they have really been able to do a lot quickly. And with that, they've taken a lot of cost out and since they're so used to being very low margin, instead of putting that cash in their pocket, and this is me drinking the juice a little bit, I really do think that they've put a lot um, into the portfolio. And I think, you know, they had EC2 and S3 for a while, made, you know, smaller innovations, but again, over the last two years have just rolled out so many products. It, it just, they can develop them so quickly, they're running really fast, and sure, they're making mistakes, but they're learning a lot quicker than the competition. What's your, what's your opinion on, so you're, you're right, they've got this business model where they pour everything back into the, into the business, and they get, the deck is stacked in their favor, because they're growing so fast, their stock price goes up when they announce a loss or when they <laughs> announce a little bit of a profit, right? Yeah. What happens when the growth slows down? Uh, do they transition to a new business model? Do you foresee that as a potential problem for them? Talk about that a little bit. So right now we see the growth speeding up, which is interesting because they are so big. Um, yeah, of course, eventually it'll level out. ServiceNow is absolutely leveling out right now. Um, but I, I think for probably at least the next five years, there is so much opportunity for Amazon because they have multiple business models. So enterprises are moving workloads to Amazon. Um, startups are building their entire business on Amazon. Partners are building businesses on Amazon. MSPs are building around Amazon. So I, I think they do have multiple levels. Um, and you know, the, the most recent one I think will be to help people globally have a global distribution center. So a company like Ramco, um, you know, they didn't really have the infrastructure to really grow outside of India, and now if they put Ramco on an AWS instance, they can go wherever they want. <laughs> so I, I don't really, I think, yeah, growth will slow down, but it's going to be such recurring revenue 
Chile, I got to ask you. I got to ask you about um, Salesforce and Dreamforce. So there, there's some tweets going around about you know Werner saying, "Oh, 8,000 people are here," and someone was kind of being uh, snarky and said, "Oh, 110,000 uh, for Salesforce." The question is: Salesforce the real? Is it really cloud? I mean, or is it just SaaS? I mean, they're not. Some say they're not even cloud. No, they don't really Who says provide. That? <laughs> well, they don't have infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. Yeah, but they don't claim they're, to have they're infrastructure SaaS, they're, they're SaaS, right. But, but to me, they're, well, a they were the original cloud vendor. But they've cobbled together a lot of stuff and the market's changed really quick. It's well known in that they've rewritten a lot of code to get modern. So what's your take on Salesforce? I mean, how do they compare in all this? And are they set up to really be a good cloud SaaS player? Yeah, I think they are set up to be a good SaaS player. Um, they're de I, in my opinion, they're definitely cloud. I might classify them with applications though, so with SAP, Oracle, as opposed to the smaller cloud vendors because they are so big. Um, I think their platform is good. They just announced the enterprise, or the private version. Their business model, in my opinion, um, I think they'll be changing it over the next To be more SAP, Oracle-like? I mean, because no. you're right, I mean, they're more software, business software. Um, I, think they'll, I think they'll start to rely on partners a bit more in the channel. Right now, their sales and marketing costs are just phenomenally high, and they've been operating at a loss for, for quite a while, which in you know, the first few years of uh, a cloud company, yeah, that's going to happen, but I think that Salesforce, you know, they don't need the, the all direct sales and all the marketing they do. I think if they start to, to decrease that, maybe increase R&D investments, because they also have been acquiring quite a lot of companies, um, so they need to, you know, make sure those to work all together. together. They got to tighten up. But okay, no, so I, I think they're, they're a great company. Okay, so let me, let's talk about the platform wars. That's our word. I mean, everyone talks about platform wars. But you know, we were at Hadoop uh, uh, World, Big Data NYC, our event in New York City, which had you know likes Estrada there and uh, Hadoop World, Hadoop Data Platform from Hortonworks, Cloudera has a new platform. So everyone's got platforms. So I want to ask you, who do you like in the market, in the cloud space, in the enterprise space, that has invested in modern platforms for IT and cloud? So we were talking about ServiceNow. We'll start off and say ServiceNow is one we we like. So talk about. ServiceNow, and who else do you like that really has a good platform with application support and agility? You know, I was going to say ServiceNow, so I don't, know, I don't know if I still can, but well, I- we'll Start I, with ServiceNow. I think they're set up, since they were built to be a platform from day one, um, I think they're set up to really be an enterprise platform. So they're going to certify all of their applications. They're only going to let a few partners release on their app store eventually when they get an app store. Um, and then roll it out to the broader audience. That's a, a totally different approach than a Salesforce and a Google um, who let you know many developers develop on their platforms very quickly so they get a lot of capabilities. But if you're looking at a real enterprise platform, Splunk? I think ServiceNow. How about Splunk? You know, I'm you not as familiar guys? with them. Okay, all right. Let me get I've your heard take great on. Things, though. Let me get your take on. Well, yeah, no, we, we <laughs> did, that's another one we like. But let me get your take on the developer community. So, developers, obviously, Amazon, big developers here. We have brought up ServiceNow mainly because they're attracting a new kind of developer, not the IDE guys doing hardcore about like business users. I would say knowledge workers, maybe dangerous enough, dangerous enough to write their own some Python, but now with scripting languages and now with visualization software those new de citizen developers, or knowledge workers now turned developers, seems to be a new category. What's your take on that? Are you watching that? Are you seeing that emerge? Yeah, I think the citizen developer is, is going to be awesome. It's not going to happen for a couple years, I would say, or at least probably a year and a half, because ServiceNow is a, a long, long way to go in developing their ecosystem. I, I think they're pretty behind in that, so that might really hinder them. Um, but in terms of the developer community, they are so important right now. Everyone is trying to get their business. Um, they're rolling out a lot of API kits and um, you know, frameworks for the developers. So I, I think the developers are in a really good place. Now what will be really interesting is how many of these developers want to support OpenStack, CloudStack, Cloud Foundry because then they'll have the HP IBM distribution channel. 
Okay, so I got to ask you, we're, we're going to ending up on our time here. Great analysis, uh, great work, uh, Julia, appreciate it. Put the bumper sticker on the car for this show. What does it mean? I'm driving down the street, I look at the car's bumper, and I want to know about what's going on at reInvent 2013. What's the bumper sticker for this event? What, sum it up in a bumper oh. sticker. <laughs> um, that's a tough one. I, I would it could be a long bumper say, sticker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, continued innovation, continued investment in innovation and growth, and you know, not slowing down, listening to the customers, really giving people the services they want, and still letting the partners fill in um, you know, the, the vertical space. So I guess innovation, if that. Innovation, consistent innovation. Whatever that means. <laughs> uh, we got some comments on Twitter too. You know, they're software-defined data center um, in their own mind, in their own infrastructure, as I would say. So, you know, obviously Amazon's doing well. Can great innovation here at Amazon Web Services. Uh, Jillian Morandi, thanks for coming on theCUBE. You're a tech athlete. Great Thank to you have you on, much. great voice. Love to get the analysts on. Dave and I love to break down and add our opinion as well uh, to the analysis. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our, our next guest. Breaking down all the action here at AWS reInvent. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back for day one kickoff. Mm -hmm.